Hey everyone, this is going to be a conversation for all the newbies, the newbies that want to be buy and hold landlords. Matt and I are going to talk about what messages we want to deliver you. And uh, let's first welcome Matt to the show. How you doing, buddy? Hey, doing awesome, Mike. Awesome, man. This is a conversation you wanted to have, so I will let you kick it off. What kind of messages do you want to deliver that newbie investor? Maybe they have zero, maybe they have one. Uh, but yeah, let, let's talk to that individual. Yeah, I think just, um, you know, look at the deals and be careful in deal selection, right? Um, you know, I think the mistake that I see a lot of people, you know, make is they watch some of these, you know, shows on TV and think that they can, you know, add an en suite or add a second layer to the garage and make another unit. Mm. Guys, that is, that is a big deal. That is a lot of work. You know, it is, it is a Karen Carpenter song. You've only just begun to feel the pain. Like it's a nightmare. So if you're a newbie and you're looking at something, try and keep, I call them lipstick houses, which is the lady's beautiful, but she just needs to put on lipstick to finalize the look, yeah. which is paint and some of those kind of easier things. So really kind of staying, people staying in their lanes. But I know that, you know, we've done a lot of stuff outside of those types of deals, but for a newbie, you know, I think staying in your lane, really recognizing kind of what the house is and what's needed, really looking more at what you talk about in your book, which is the cost of getting into the deal and then what your rents are going to be. Yeah. If I'm talking to a newbie, I want to just remind you of what I did the first five years. That's right. I had, I had a criteria that was in hindsight, like this small, right? I didn't know it at the time. I thought it was big, but remember I wanted one zip code, one asset type, meaning single family homes. I avoided duplexes, tries, quads, all commercial. I wanted single story built in the eighties, this big, right? I think it was like 12 to 1500 square feet. Mm -hmm. That felt like crazy to me in hindsight. Sure. Now that I can look at the entire market in about 20 minutes, it's, it's very micro, but that you got to focus in the beginning, right? You just have to, and you, you have to, you have to be comfortable letting other things go, especially in the beginning. Cause I call it, I used to travel all the time and I call it tunnel vision, yep. right? When I you, literally like, I remember traveling like 40,000 miles in a month on an oh. airplane. And I swear I saw the world like it, like a, like an airplane tube, right? Everything else was just going by. All I could see is straight ahead. That's what I want a newbie to think, right? Call yeah. your focus area at step one of my course, call it, declare it. And that's all you look at. Don't be distracted by YouTube entertainers talking about doing this or that. Don't be, don't be, don't be distracted by people flashing checks on social media. Don't be distracted. Uh, and again, you know, three houses in, in about 18 or 24 months, it, it works. That's, that's what we did way back at the beginning, but it was only because we were focused. You can't, you can't make progress. If you try to go an inch in 50 directions, it doesn't work. Right. Yeah. I mean, I think, you know, the kiss method, right? Keep it simple, stupid. Mm -hmm. And that's it. Keep it simple is, you know, a lot of the stuff that I did wasn't these major gut renovations and got to go down to the studs and then worry about insulation, R value and running new Romex and, you know, all this other crazy stuff. Now you can get there. Sure. But the first few, you know, if you look at what the deal is, just recognize the more work that's needed, the more time it's going to take. And you need to make sure that you're properly budgeted that you can afford to take that on. There's all sorts of loan programs and things like that out there, but just make sure that it's not too big. Yeah. Make sure that it doesn't have any of the major stuff, you know, like roofs and heating systems and, you know, bad foundations or sewer line issues. That thousand dollars that you can spend on a complete full on through inspection. My, I won't lie. My, my inspections don't cost me nearly that because I can do most of it myself now because mm -hmm. I'm on number, you know, whatever, 77 or something. So I don't need to spend all that money because I can do a lot of it. However, if you're that first time, if you spend the thousand bucks, you can check off all the boxes, you know, pest and sewer line inspection and don't do it from the clean out, do it from the inside of the house. Mm -hmm. You know, all these little things that people need to make sure they're doing because I just replaced a sewer line. It cost, it was going to cost me $28,000 to replace that sewer line. No. Oh. In working with the city, they wanted 20 grand for the permit. Yeah. So I had to argue with them and back and forth. And at the end of the day, we were able to agree that I was only going to pay marginally for the permit and I was going to pay for all the other work that needed to be done. But I ended up still, it still cost me 10,000 bucks. 
And the worst part is it was 10,000 bucks on a line that all it does is carry things outside the house. <laughs> there is no added value there. Yeah. You're not going to put that in the marketing description. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. I hope you guys know this has a brand new sewer line and it's beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> here's a picture of it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, here's the before. Ew. Here's the after. Ah, yeah. You know, but yeah, there's no value in that. And so that's the thing that I want to make sure that newbies are focusing on is you spend that thousand bucks on that expansion, uh, on that inspection, guys, it makes sure that you have a clean deal and that you're not getting in over your head where you have that, you know, pardon the language, the oh shit moment mm -hmm. when you're like, we just closed on things. We didn't see this before and what is going on and what, you know, now we're done. This is, this is a problem. Yeah. The other thing I want to remind students of or followers of mine is when you're that deal selection, I love that word that you used in the beginning. I want you to run your numbers because some of you, yeah. some of you, you might want to buy a turnkey property, right? That's done, yep. dialed. Yep. Run the, do the math, right? <laughs> do the work. That's totally it. Yeah. Yeah. I yep. mean, I admit it in my book, I would have been farther along if I would have bought turnkey when I started, right? Yeah. I was enamored by cheap. I bought the lipstick house or what I now would term the lipstick house, right? It was well used is what I was thinking. But what I didn't realize is, you know, that extra five or 10 grand, at least at the time, right? Remember I was pre-bubble. I could have, sure. I could have doubled. I could have had, instead of having seven or eight houses, I could have had 15. Yeah. Uh, because I didn't appreciate my cash. So again, run the numbers. Yeah. And when you're doing the work, I mean, perfectly said, Mike, you know, when you're doing the work, when we looked at our deals, you know, we would move in and we, we were, I was the duplex King. That's everything I did. I was duplex, 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 because I loved that money coming from the other side, paying my mortgage down. I loved being able to live in one side, redo the other side. After that side was done, I could rent it out and then I could live in the one that I was redoing, or I would even elongate it and spend the time. That's one of my investment strategies. That's worked out really well. Now I was I was committed to the mission. Mm. So I moved nine times in 13 years so I could keep on moving into my next deal. Now, if you yeah. want to be committed to the mission, that's how you get rich. Yeah. But it'll take 10 years, 12 years. But then I look 10 years ago, some of those duplexes that I paid 165 grand for and I put 35 or 40,000 bucks into are now worth 400 grand, 450 <laughs> grand. They've doubled. Yeah. 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 Exactly. And you do that times 10 guys, it's math. It's yeah. just math. And, and the other thing you said there, and I have the same story, folks, I don't know what it is. We want everything tomorrow. Yeah. Both of us have a tremendous track record. I don't think anybody watching this wouldn't like to be where we are, but realize Matt, you just said it took 10 years. I'm very clear. Yeah. It took us 15. Yeah. Yep. You know, if you want to play, play, don't, this, this is not a, you know, what, what I really want people to realize is the first, you know, even when we had seven houses in a duplex or no, six houses in a duplex, yeah, six houses in a duplex, our cash flow was like 20% of what we needed to support. I mean, that's after four or five years, right? Yeah. It, you know, yeah. if that was ah, just, it takes time. It takes yeah. I mean, time. I've been doing it, you know, in the, in that mark, in this market, it's been 13 years. Um, I've been doing it for almost 20 you know, early 2000s is when I started, but we look at it now and it's like, I started, you know, pretty young. Now I'm 43 and guess what? I can kind of do whatever I really want to do at this point. You know, <laughs> you, you mean it pays off? Yeah, it does. One would say, you know, <laughs> but to your point, right? 20 years. Yeah. Like, and that was the idea is I wanted to be strategically tactical. Yeah which is have the strategy of this is where I want to get to, but tactically you have to be efficient in getting the steps done, each property in and of itself. And then that end up being the sum of the parts. Yeah. And that's where you have to be. You have to be strategically tactical. Yeah, dude. And the, the, one of the, the best thing I've created to date, while I love the book and all of that, I'm so proud. I never thought I'd write a book. The course I created, How to Get Started One Rental at a Time, is everything I did to, to learn my market and get started. It's it's not a foo-foo course. It is, all right, folks, I'm going to smack you out of the gate and see if you're ready to do the work, right? Because exactly. you're going to get focused like I talked about, and you're going to look at it 10 or 20 minutes a day. 
if you want to do the work, folks, and you're going to give me 10 or 20 minutes a day, I can change your future. Yeah. If you just want to, you know, buy the course to say you have and, and don't do it, don't bother, right? Go look at bigger pockets or something. Save sure. the 200 bucks. I don't want it. But man, I, every week, man, I have this positive impact score. I had, I had four students. You do crushed it. Class. Yeah. Yeah. I saw that. Awesome. Yeah. I was pretty happy about that. So again, awesome. learn your market, do the deals. This year is going to be game changing. Yeah. Inventory is going to rise. Rates will stay relatively low. This could be the magic year in 2021. But folks, you got to do the work first. Don't gamble. 100%. Don't gamble. No, you got exactly. It's 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 cool. It's calculated. It's not emotional. It's don't have FOMO. It really is the numbers. You know, my favorite saying is hashtag. It's just math. Yeah, you know that's why <laughs> I love it. Long just time. math. I'm just like it's just math, guys. It's just math. It, it's and not that's even it. algebra. It's just math. <laughs> yeah, it's really truly just math. And just remove the emotion from it. It's really truly just math. But you can set yourself up for the rest of your life. It's not a get rich quick scheme. It's the tortoise. Slow and steady wins the race. That's what's going to happen over the next, you know, five, 10, 15 years, I think, in this market. And you'll have that opportunity to buy a payment now with a lower rate. And then in a few years, even if your property value is down, it doesn't matter if your property value is down. People are like, well, I lost my house. Did you have an adjustable rate mortgage? No, I lost my house. Did you lose your job? No. Well, then that's just math. If you didn't lose your job and you had a fixed rate mortgage, nothing changed that aggressively. That means you couldn't afford your payment. Mm -hmm. And there's two things you can control. You can control your income and you can control your expenses, but your expenses are a whole lot easier to control than your income. Absolutely. So always focus on your, on your, on your expenses, because that's where you create the money to be able to do projects like Mike started doing. And I started doing 20 years ago. Yeah. The last thing to talk about here is I want people to start with single family homes, certainly residential fourplexes and below. For one yes. real big reason, I cannot guarantee you're going to like being a landlord. Being a landlord's Absolutely. hard. It, it is. Sometimes. For some yeah. people, it's emotionally draining. Yeah. You know, at this point, I have a callus. I don't even feel it or hear it. I've heard every excuse. I've seen everything. It doesn't bother me. It bothers me maybe a micro sometimes, but sometimes on, yeah. this, on the scheme of things, it doesn't bother me. But I can't promise you that's you. So I want you to do a residential deal to start to see what happens because those are the easiest to get out of and get out of whole. If you do a big commercial deal, like these bigger, better guys, yeah, you could lose a significant part of your equity. So that may be your goal. You may want to own hundreds of apartments. Great. But do me a favor. Let's start with a house or a duplex just to see if this game is for you. What do you think? I totally agree. And I think that the lending rates too, hmm. you know, you're not getting uh, you're not getting a three and a half percent down FHA mortgage on anything more than a single family or a duplex, yeah. you know? And like I said, I'm the duplex King. I did some single family, but almost a majority of my portfolio and how I built my wealth was all through duplexes. Yeah. I love and that. it's, it's, I'm telling you, it's absolutely don't get emotional and, you know, just be very, it's just math. Just let the math, you know, Mike's laid everything out in his book. I've read his book. It's an excellent book. And it says it right in there exactly the steps that you need to take. And that's what you should be paying attention to. It's just math. Don't get emotional. Very and cool. you might look at a hundred deals, maybe even 200 before you have a, holy cow, I think this one might fit. <laughs> I'm glad and you said that. Okay. You yeah. don't have to have a one-to-one, -one, you know, yeah. I used to be really proud about the fact that you know, for about a year, I closed on every property I went and saw, but it was because I did all the math and I knew that I could get unearthed value that others couldn't based on what I was doing in the market. And it worked out great. And now, you know, I don't care if I closed a bunch of those deals or if I'm, if I win one out of 10, because I know the one that I won, it's a good, it's yeah. a good one. I'm glad you brought that up because one of the things I, I just keep reminding people of last year was a rough year to be an investor. And yeah. just in context, I've been doing this a long time. I wrote about 250 offers and got like five or six counters, right? <laughs> <laughs> because again, I only write good or great deals. And in a market sure. of no inventory, I get outbid all the time. Sure. Uh, so realize that, yes, the guy talking to you is still in the business, still growing deals. See, see video one for a deal we just did, just closed. But yeah, I'm, I'm still growing. I'm still doing more stuff. And, you know, last year was different. 
I don't, I already see this year is different, i.e. we just closed two deals. Um, yeah. But yeah, you may look at a lot and that's yeah. okay. And that's okay. Cause it's far better to look and not leap mm -hmm. than to look and leap and miss. Yeah. No kidding. <laughs> Very cool, man. Well, this has been a great conversation. I look forward to number three. Sounds good. Thanks, Mike. Uh -huh.